Welcome back to Coach's Corner. I'm Jake Lancer with Bill Coleman for HWTV, and today we're joined with boys basketball head coach David Rebibo. Coach, happy belated birthday. The Thank Wolverines you. are in the heat of Mission League play. They defeated Chaminade last night, 78-46. to Who led the team last night in that blowout win? Uh, great question. I think... Uh I think effort led the team in okay. the, last night. I thought, uh, you know, we played really hard, um, really aggressive, really assertive, and made it a point. I think we had about 22 assists last night. So uh, really balanced effort. Um, I think Nick in three quarters had 18. Trent had 15. Robert had 14. Um, and then, you know, a slew of guys with eight, nine. Um, Josh Engelberg, uh, Don Bentho, and I think Nicolo, Kelster Stork as well. And, uh who else? Yeah. Got to sort of get into last week. Yeah. It was an emotional roller coaster. Start the week with a huge win on on the road, you know, over in uh, Chicago against uh, McEachern. And then you come home and drop two games in the Mission League. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're coaching high school players, right? You know, on a week with so many highs and lows, how are you as a coach able to sort of level out the emotions of the team? You know, uh First off, the uh, Hoop Hall Classic is probably the premier sh- is the yeah. premier showcase in the country, uh, and when they offer you a slot against a nationally ranked team with a potential NBA player on the team on well, national TV on, also yeah. and on national te- television, um, those are things you can't pass up uh, for your program. And obviously, for us to go win and and do that was fantastic. Obviously, coming back having a day turnaround time landing Monday night late, you know, there's, there's, it's easy to make excuses. Uh, my rebuttal would be, we were in both those games in the fourth quarter and yep. had opportunities. Um, did we shoot it well? No. Did we make enough plays? No. Did we do things out of character? Yes. Um, could those be tied to fatigue? Sure. But at the end of the day, we didn't make plays. Um, I, I thought that those teams had a sense of urgency, um, and and being hunted is a, is a skill. Handling being hunted is a skill, and I think those are things that we had to kind of address. Um, we had our first weekend off, which was incredibly nice. I think it was our first since December, 20, December 26th, you know, when we started playing in Le Schwab. Um, so it's been, it's been a heck of a run, but I thought that weekend was critical. I thought... Uh, Two straight days of practice was huge. Felt like we got back to being us a little bit, and uh, we're excited. Yep. Yeah, and I think that segues well into the next question, which is that this is the first time in the past couple of years that this team has lost back-to-back games. Obviously, these are against incredible basketball teams, and it was a very difficult schedule last week, but this is also a team that last year was used to winning games like that and used to prevailing in the end like that. So looking at that experience and knowing that you don't have many guys who have you know gone through that before – are there any positives that you and the team can take out of that situation, you know, maybe experience-wise? Look, um, adversity, as much as we all hate feeling it and going through it, is a great thing. It's when – those are the opportunities when you find greatness. They're the opportunities when you find growth, when you find maturation. Nobody matured by just having everything be easy, right? Nobody uh, found maturation and growth by just – hey, the road is paved and it's all easy and good and fun and now I just do whatever I want to do. Um, You have to face adversity. You have to go through things like we did last week. And frankly, um, besides the travel, you know, we will have a span of five days where we have to play three or a week where we have to play three incredibly tough games, you know, in order to be champions. Um, So those are things that that we kind of wanted to emulate as best we could. And that week happened to be what it was, obviously. Um, you know, and, and credit to the other team for for competing at the level they did and being ready. But uh, I, I think we are we will grow a lot from that from that 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 week of games, that stretch of games, um, and uh, I think our best basketball is still ahead of us. Yeah, and on that point, I mean, you guys obviously are hoping to see these teams again down the road in the Mission League tournament. How do you keep the team's confidence high, knowing that they already lost those teams to beat them the second time around? Yeah, you know. Um, that we know who we are and what we are. Um, we know that there are very high expectations, and, and I think our guys understand the opportunities lost and opportunities gained, right? Um, you don't lose confidence by losing two games. You just have to get back to doing things that equate to winning, and uh, 
that's been our focus. Um, our focus isn't isn't the result. It's what led to the result and uh, trying to clean up those little things that will equal a positive result for us in the future. So uh, we feel like obviously rebounding, defending, and doing the things that our, our program, our culture is built on um, will help establish that. And last night was a great first step in that direction. Awesome. Now, segueing into talking a little bit more about some specific players, I did want to touch on Nikola Kaiser Stork. We've seen him. He had a great performance last night in the game, yep. and he's also slowly been accumulating some more minutes lately. Very athletic, SMU commit. How is the team going to utilize him going forward? You know, for him, um, it, it just comes down to taking advantage of his opportunities and being ready to go. We know uh, his capability, um, and frankly, it's all hands on deck right now for us as we're trying to uh, to to prepare for a mission league championship and playoffs a couple days ago trent perry gets named you know mcdonald's all-american also gets listed as the second best player in the state by espn it's your first uh, mcdonald's all-american at harvard westlake right yep so i mean you've been with trent since seventh grade you know you've been working with him you've known him and you've believed in him how what were you like your emotions when you found out that he got that accolade you know um it, it was just a ton of pride uh, you talk about a high character kid um, who has been process oriented, who accepted coaching, he accepted consequence, he accepted adversity, uh, and in this day and age, not not very common, right? And so for me, it was a, a accumulation of of pride and 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 happiness for him, his family, um, and our program. Um, you know, I think uh, the stories of the Trent Perrys who have been at a school for six years and stayed, yep. uh, continued to work from unranked guy to, hey, we're going to move him to a six, different 16U team for club to he's going to go up to 17U and play as a 16U um, and grind it out and just keep working. Those are the stories that need to be told more often as opposed to the super teams and just joining this and just going there and transferring three or four schools, in it's, my opinion. It's pretty cool because – I think everyone in-house has sort of seen that he has, you know, the potential and talent uh, deserving of all these accolades, but it doesn't feel that maybe until sort of midway through last year, maybe towards the end of the season, that he started to get the attention he deserved. Does it feel satisfying at all to you that now he is sort of getting uh, getting talked about in those discussions? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, the reality with him is he's a byproduct of his work, but he's also a byproduct of being a winner. Yeah. And uh, I think the value on being a winner, playing the kind of schedules we've played the last few years, him being as productive as he's been while also being a great kid and a great teammate, um, that makes you an All-American. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of looking ahead at the schedule for you guys later this year, obviously playing some tough teams and some you know big Mission League matchups coming up. You look at the past two losses that you guys had, and one of the big parts of that was the rebounding battle that you talked about earlier. You know, both offensive and defenses, the team was unable to get some crucial rebounds at certain points in the game. So how do you try and make sure that doesn't happen again in future matchups? You know, it's it's just something we have to address. Um, going into this Notre Dame game, going into the McEachern game, we knew that they rebounded at a 44% uh, rate of their offensive rebounds. So they're, they're, they're getting 44% of their misses, you know. Um, Notre Dame was at 46, and then Sierra Canyon was at 47. The preparation was there. Um, there was no, like, hey, game to game, we're totally sh – each team had incredible players. Each team had incredible athleticism. It just came down to execution and doing it. Um, you know, was it, whether it was mental, physical fatigue, or, or just, hey, uh, uh, mental lapses, um, they were made. And – at the end of the day, it comes down to one-on-one -on -one battles, and uh, we've got to take pride in those one-on-one -on -one battles. We've got to take pride in pursuing the ball and winning 50-50 balls and, and um, winning space in one-on-one -on -one battles for box outs. So those are things that we're continuing to address. They're, they're important, and uh, I would tell you last night there were multiple times where guys were hitting the floor, um, boxing each other out at times, just trying to make it a point to do the things that we've been talking about that, that hurt us last week. So... Um, they're being addressed. We're working on it, but uh, we just need to execute, and we'll be fine. We saw some of the top players in the country last week. Uh, number two player in the nation, Ace Bailey, you mentioned earlier, probably going to be in the NBA in a couple of years. We saw Mercy Miller, and then sort of surprising in some ways, Justin Pippen. Sierra Canyon had a really big game, but uh, the team was able to contain Ace. I think they did a really good job, especially Nick sort of uh, took that matchup with a lot of pride. 
Mercy ended up having a pretty big game, and then second half, Justin Pippen makes six threes. All of you, I talked to you about Ace, and I think Mercy also last week, and you know, you're, I remember what you told me was, you know, they're going to get their shots, and that's okay. Um, at a certain, obviously, you know, they're great players; they're going to score a certain amount. At a certain point in the game, if they're just sort of going off, is there a certain point where you consider switching things up defensively? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's very. Um you know, if if we do our job, and I thought, um, particularly against Ace, for the most part, besides a couple turnovers that led to some buckets, we did a pretty good job. Um, as it pertained to Mercy, um, I didn't think we did a great job uh, of executing our game plan. And um, when you're not doing the little things, switching things up on the fly at times um, can create more confusion in, in certain situations from my philosophy, sometimes simplifying is better. And, uh, you know, had we cleaned up a few of those offensive rebounds, had we done a better job boxing him out, I don't know that his stat line looks the way it yeah. does. Um, and same thing with Justin Pippen. Uh, you know, of uh, those six threes, three came off offensive rebounds. Um, one of them off a of baseline out of bounds, which we didn't even guard him. Yeah. Um, those are things that, that aren't scheme related. Those come down to doing your job and uh, doing it in a in a manner that that befit, be, benefits the team. Um, so you know, obviously, switching things is 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 critical. Um, but when guys are making shots and you're not rebounding, a zone isn't going to help you yeah. in that situation because rebounding becomes more complicated in zones. Um, you know, if we're not communicating switches and getting into guys, like well, giving guys space in a zone isn't you necessarily going to do that. So. Um, I think for us, um, in my time here, that they, we did some things that we haven't been known to do. Things that, you know, not to say we wouldn't have lost or whatever the case may be, but just got out of character. One guy that it's been a pretty cool story this season, I'd say, is Isaiah Carroll. Yep. Was on JV last year, correct, for at least most of the season. Yep. And so now, you know, he's getting decent minutes for yep. a, a really big squad. Had a career game against Campbell Hall a month ago, and it feels like every game I watch, he's getting more and more minutes. How has he progressed in the span of a couple months during this season in your eyes, and could we see an even bigger role for him as the playoffs near? Yeah, you know, for him, um, he, I don't know that he knows really what he's capable of yet. Um, from a length, athleticism standpoint, he can impact the game in so many ways. Um, one of the best things about him, and I think he's, it, it started to happen, he fouled out yesterday in the third quarter, um, and it was pure effort and toughness plays. And did he go overboard? Probably. Could some of those fouls have been avoided? Sure. But the fact that he was just putting it on the line and competing as hard as he was and trying to get better at doing the things that we've been talking about, it's a great sign for what's to come from him. Um, he's going to be critical as well as the rest of our bench. You know, we, we need production. Um, we need guys, you know, Christian Ori is shooting the ball incredibly right now and continues to be um, the back major piece of our back, uh, to our team and a, and a backbone uh, for us. Um, but we need other guys to step up, and we need other guys to make plays, you know. Um, we can't rely on the ball getting to Trent, Nick, and Robert and them doing everything. We've got to be able to make plays for them too and free them up a little bit, and I think that's going to be really important down the stretch. Yeah, so, you know, despite this little rough patch in the past week here, the team's goals are all still clearly right in front of them. Obviously, Mission League tournament coming up, that's a big step. This year, though, you will not be the one seed and you won't be able to get the bye in the first round, and that's a bit of a new situation for some of the players and some of the leaders on this team. So do you think that this team going into that tournament has maybe a bit of an underdog mentality, and do you think that they can use that to, you know, help them get some revenge? We better. Um, we better. Uh, I think the reality is, is that we are in third place currently and we're right where we we're, where we should be, but we're nowhere near where we want to be. And uh, it's a good mentality to have going into this. And I'm, I'm excited for our guys. Um, I think our guys are excited. I think they're chomping at the bit to play and they know what's ahead of them. And it starts tomorrow night with St. Francis for senior night uh, and then Saturday with Foothill. And then we'll have a nice day off Sunday. And then Monday will be a prep day as we prepare for uh, – whoever the 6-7 matchup is. And then uh, Wednesday, we're on a back-to-back -back with minimal prep time for either Notre Dame or Sierra. So um, we're, we're excited. We know we, we know what time of year it is. We know what's on the line. Um, we also know all of our goals are still right in front of us and uh, very, very much attainable. And it, it's just about doing our job. You know, I, I said this to our guys, the idea that 
we were going to be perfect was never a reality. Um, things things happen. If uh, if Washington State can go to Arizona and beat Arizona, you know, <laughs> Harvard Westlake basketball can lose a game or two. You know, it's going to happen. Um, no different from the Detroit Pistons going. Sorry, Jake. Come on, going in, man. Going in and beating the Milwaukee Bucks or somebody. You know, uh, it, it happens. And uh, um, you know, those are professional athletes. Those are collegiate athletes. Um, they don't do the things that we do academically. They don't have the schedule that our guys have. And and you know, those things happen. And it's human nature. The key, the character, the culture of our program is that we're going to bounce back. And we won't be beat the same way twice. And uh, that's what I'm most looking forward to. Leads me sort of into my next question. Take on St. Francis on senior night should be a fun one. We're going to get into the game. But before that, you know, it is senior night, of course. It's a deep senior class this year. Could you give an adjective or a word to describe each guy, uh, each senior on this squad? Yeah, yeah. Might take a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind (laughs) of... You know, <laughs> Marcus and Keon, like the the, the major, the, when it what comes to mind for those guys is just dedication. Um, those guys show up every day. They work hard. They're great teammates. They're they're great ambassadors of our program. Ambassadors of our program, and uh, two guys that that are just fantastic. Um, Nico and Josh, you know, obviously two two unique players who are really talented and really good. Um, Josh, kind of the quiet assassin. Who just kind of gets things done and 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 just knows how to play and Nico, you know, um, just a warrior in a, in himself and and um, just can do so many different things, um, you know, and and so you, you obviously are, are really proud of that. Christian Ori is just the, the the general, you know, the captain, the guy, he, you know, he he shows up, he works, he does his job, he'll do whatever you ask, he'll take a charge in a big moment, he'll box it. Hit open shots and just do everything, um, and and you just love to see it. Uh, Robert Hinton, um, it, joy. I mean, I've just you know you, you never see a guy smile as much and just, but then come out with some ferocious intensity and speed and power, um, and and then an incredible smile right to to boot. Um, incredible competitor and, and a guy who's just all about the team and winning. Um, really, really fun. And then uh, I think Trent Perry is the last one. Yeah. No. Trent, um, winner. Winner, worker. Um, you know, he, he were up pretty big at halftime yesterday, and he goes, have I missed anybody? Am I, am I, is the ball moving? Am I, how do you think defensively we're doing? And, like, that's that's what mattered to him, you know, in that moment. And, uh, you know, just the, it was such a special group, um, such a talented group. And, uh Seven guys we're going to sorely miss. Well, sort of one more question about the senior class, and we'll get into the game. Feels like this class is sort of special in some ways, means a lot to you. Um, most of them have been here from seventh grade. They've all been here for some really milestone wins for the program, not only in the playoffs, but also in the regular season through the past couple of years. And, I mean, you know, Josh Engelberg, you've known his dad, and so you've known Josh for yep. a while. And Nicolo's been going to Harvard West like, s- basketball summer camp since he was, like, you know, before middle <laughs> school. So you've known these guys, some of them, for even longer than seventh grade. Uh, would you say this group holds a special place in your heart? Absolutely. You know, every senior senior class does um, – and and they touch you in some way. You know, we as coaches are not in this thing uh, to make a million dollars. You know, it's just not happening. Um, we're not in this thing to ride the coattails of any players. At least you shouldn't be, and at least nobody in our program, uh, no coach in our program is. We're in it for the betterment of young athletes, young student athletes, and uh, seeing them grow, grow up, and become men, it, it touches you every year, and... and uh, there's nothing better than when they come back, like Santiago Brando swinging by and coming to the Crespi game and coming in the locker room after the game. Like, what could be better than that? Truman, Brace, Holden, Spencer coming to the Valencia game. Uh, Johnny Juzang texted me on my birthday, right? Um, Brady checking in after every game. Hey, man, we need to start rebounding. Hey, we need to start doing this. And Jacob as well. Um, you know, they watch it still because it mattered. Um, and uh, this group like every other one will hold a special place in my heart. But this group, obviously, the uniqueness, the longevity, um, it, it is very, very special. And uh, they're, they're family forever. 
That's awesome. And lastly, finishing on the game, you know, obviously a big one tomorrow night, St. Francis at home, senior night, four-star junior in Mozzie Mosley. Going to be, you know, tough to stop. He's going to be the guy for them. Just picked up a UCLA offer. What's going to be the key to shutting him down and getting that big win on senior night? You know, the, the number one priority is, is making his catches difficult and, and making sure that he's just not working in space. Uh, we, we do want to do a good job of crowding him and crowding. They have a couple other shooters who, who do a really good job, and he does a good job of getting off the ball as well. So um, crowding him while still getting out to shooters can be vital. But the, the, the next priority for us is rebounding. we got to limit them to one shot. we got to get out and run, and we we got to play our brand of basketball. Um, and we got to do that and, and continue to do it as we build momentum towards the Mission League tournament and playoffs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate it. This has been Coach's Corner. I'm Bill Coleman with Jake Lancer for HWTV. Thank you very much. Please tune into the game tomorrow on HWTV St. Francis on Senior Night. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.